Hi guys, Ryan here, and in this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can easily change your CPU governor in Linux in order to increase performance or battery life. So you might be thinking, what is a CPU governor? Well, the Arch Wiki defines it as a, a governor as a power scheme used by a CPU. So for example, you can set your CPU to use the power saver governor in order to lower its maximum clock speed, in order to save some energy and some battery life. Or alternatively, you can use the performance governor to set your CPU to use the maximum possible clock speed, the best possible performance at the cost of greatly reduced battery life and more energy consumption. Now, by default, what you'll typically find is that your CPU is set to use some form of balanced governor, and this aims to only increase the clock speed when it's required, and then dial it back again when it's not required. Personally, I prefer to have my CPU always run at full tilt on my desktop, so I use the performance governor. But again, depending on your usage, you might want to be using the power saver governor, especially if battery life is a concern. Now it's not exactly 100% comparison, but in Windows 10, you have things called power schemes, and that's usually a power saver, balanced, or high performance. But you can get other ones such as ultimate performance or some custom ones from AMD. In fact, one of the settings within these power schemes is a CPU frequency. And this is where you can specify a value between 1 and 100, the minimum and maximum, and that is the aspect that's like a CPU governor in Linux. In addition, there's also different CPU schedulers available on Linux, but to be honest, that's beyond the scope of this particular video. So in order to easily change the governor on your system, we're going to be using an application called CPU Power GUI. You can typically install the application using your package manager, but unless you're using a rolling release distribution such as Arch, then the version found in the repositories will likely be out of date. But luckily, instructions on obtaining the latest versions can be found on the installation section of the project's page. So for example, for Fedora or Ubuntu-based distributions, you can use the OpenSUSE Build Service or OBS, not to be confused with OBS Studio, and that will add the repository to your system and then allow you to install the latest version from there. So the application itself can be run from your launcher and at first it may look a little bit off, especially if you're not using GNOME as your desktop environment. But all of the functionality, with the exception of one aspect, which we'll cover shortly, works. So for example, the settings tab will allow you to switch between the different governors that are available for your CPU and if supported, allow you to also turn off different CPU cores in order to save energy. You can also specify, if you wish, a minimum or maximum frequency. And in the Preferences tab, you can choose to select a default profile to load at boot, which by default will either be performance or balanced. But if you want, you can create your own custom profiles as well. Now, one thing just to note, the default profiles at boot will only work with the GNOME desktop environment if you use the GUI tool. However, if you want to manually specify a profile to load at boot, you can do that by editing the power underscore GUI config file, and then it will work with other desktop environments. So if you're curious where the config file is, you can find it in your, your root directory slash etc, and inside you will find a, a file called cpu power underscore GUI dot config. If you open it up, there's a section here, the profile section, and here you can specify what profile you want to launch on boot so for example I want to use performance so I change that to performance and then save it save this file apply your settings and then next time you reboot your system you'll be using the performance profile now using CPU power GUI will apply a permanent change to your CPU governor but if you do want a more on-demand option then I recommend you check out feral game mode which will apply the same configuration, but only while certain applications load into memory, which makes it very handy for things such as games. Either way, with that, you now have a GUI method of switching your CPU governor, which depends on your configuration, can it improve performance or increase your battery life. And with that, it brings this video to an end. As always, thank you very much for watching, and if you did find this video helpful, then please do leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.